Bonjour! Here we are again, the Sudoku guy with another lesson. And last week, or the last lesson I gave, was where we discovered that using top, middle, bottom, and left, center, right enabled us to find just not one number for a block, but also two, or perhaps three. Well, in this lesson, we're going to continue with that concept, but instead of the system that we used last time, I'm going to show you little things like this. If you are a visual learner or a pictorial person, you'll find this really interesting. So here we go. See what I've got here? This is what I call a cleaver. A cleaver is like the butcher's knife. And a cleaver can be found on your puzzle and it always takes up three blocks. It could be these three blocks, it could be sideways using these three blocks, or these three blocks, it could be upside down using say these three blocks, or these three blocks, it doesn't matter, it can be found this way, this way, this way, and this way. Now the example I've got on the board here is this one, where you've got the cleaver, this is the blade of the knife, in these two blocks, and the handle of the knife is down in here. And how do you recognize this? Let me show you. I'm going to draw in red the actual cleaver shape, and it looks something like this. This is the blade, and down here will be the handle. Can you see that? Now, what we're looking for when we start doing a puzzle is this configuration, that picture. You've probably noticed that a lot of times I've been saying when we've been doing puzzles that you only put a, one, a number in a block in two of the cells. If it goes in other cells, don't put anything in. There was a reason for that, and you'll see why in this lesson. But let me assure you, Next lesson, we start to get into really difficult puzzles, and then you have no alternative. You've got to put more numbers in. You'll see what I mean next lesson. So for the time being, let's look at this. We've got two eights here, two eights here. When I see that, when I'm doing a puzzle, I immediately know that that is the blade of a cleaver. And that's therefore, the numbers down here in the handle have to be one of these numbers. Now let me show you how it works using left, center, right. If it's this, this is an eight, then that will become an eight. If that becomes an eight, an eight has to go there. Now, if this was an eight, then this would be an eight. Therefore, an eight still has to go there. So you can confidently put an eight there, even although you only had little eights there. So that's the concept of a cleaver. But there's more to it than that. Let, let us take it a little bit more advanced. Let's assume that we had a 5-8 here and a 5-8 here like this. I'll show you. This was, let's assume that that was a 5 and this was a 5. And I'll remove, say, this one just for fun. Now, let's see what happens. We will come up with the same situation. Let's say that this was a 5, therefore that's going to be a 5, and the 5 comes down in here. It could be here or here. Now, let's say that just for argument's sake, there was a 5 over here. You would then know if that was a 5, then that must be a, it could be a 5, and the 5 has to be in the handle, and therefore it would be down here because it can't go there, because it can't go here because of that 5. Therefore, the 8 has to go right, center, has to be on the left, and now you've got two numbers, two big numbers, just because you recognize the cleaver. Now, the cleaver can look this way too. Let me show you. Let's assume that the 5 was say down here, and this five was down here. It still works the same. 
If this was a five, then that's going to be, oh, that's going to be, I've got too big of one there, make it a small one. If this was a little five, if that was a centre, that was a right, this has to be a five. If it was an eight, then it would be the right, the centre, and then the left. So that's a cleaver. Now we're going to move on to another pattern. And this pattern I call the mallet. Now a mallet is the sort of shape where you've got a handle and a big wooden end to bang on wooden um, dowels or whatever it is in, in, when you're doing uh, woodwork. Now this can be, look, you can look at it this way. Just let me point out also that it's also a, a pattern that goes three blocks. All these little pictures that I'm going to show you are three, take three blocks. Could be this way, it could be this way, it could be this way, and it could be that way. All those different ways will be a mallet. Now the one I'm going to demonstrate for you right now is in the middle here. This in the middle is a mallet because we have two nines here, two nines here, and when you have that, you know that the handle of the mallet has to be there. So let me draw it out for you, and we'll make this one say a blue. This is the blue one. Here's the top of the mallet, and sometimes it could be up in here, it depends, but the main thing is that two nines are in one block, and two nines are in another block. They're little ones. And you discover this as you were doing your cross part at the beginning when you do horizontal lines or blocks, then you do vertical blocks with ramifications. This is when you discover these things. Now, this was, becomes now the handle. The handle will come down here. Now, let's see what happens. Same situation, but in this case, we have a right, a left. There has to be in here somewhere. So it has to be there. Also, if this is a left and that's a right, it still has to be in the handle. Because of this nine, your nine will go there, like so. Whoops, I did a wrong color, but you understand anyway. Um, let's do it right. I'll make it a real nine in black. Got to be, got to do it right. So that's a nine there. A big number as a result of understanding this pattern here. Similarly to the 5-8 over here, you could have a, uh, something like this. We, we could have a 5 here and a, a 5 over here. So you would have, if you had 5 there and a five, little 5 there, you, this would have to be a 5 because left, right, center. Also, that 5 doesn't have to be in those positions. They can be in different positions. This one could have been, say, up here. You could have had it up here. As long as it's in that little that little box, I'll make it so it looks like it's a small number. There you go. And it comes a five again. So that's a mallet. Now let's go on to the table. This is the next one. Now the table can be have thick legs or thin legs, but again, it goes over three uh, blo blocks. Here's the top block, here's the middle block, here's the bottom lock, block. Let me put this down so you can see it better. There you go. Now, in this particular case, the table is sideways, but you could also have the table looking this way. You could also have the table looking this way. You could also have the table this way. It depends on whether it's vertical or horizontal blocks. The one I'm going to show you here is this one. Can you see that? See if you can see it without me even showing it on the board. So with that in mind, let's see, there, this, there's a table in here. Let's see what we can find out. Here's a 2-2 two, two in this block. Here's a 2-2 two, two in this block. Therefore, you know the 2 has to be in this block somewhere, but because there's 2-2 two, two there, and there's 2-2 two, two there, the 2 has to go in the, on the top of the table. So it has to go there. See how it works? Now, let's say you had a, let's say you had a, a we'll, you, we'll use a seven just for fun. Let's say that this was a seven, and I'll rub this one out now. Let's say this was a seven. Let 
And you're probably working it out now what's going to happen, huh? And this one was a 7. The same thing works. 2, center, right, left. And in this case, it's got to be the left, right, center. There it is. Now that 7 doesn't necessarily have to be right there. It can be down in here or up in here, or this 7 could be somewhere, say, up in here somewhere, as long as it's in this block opposite the 2. I mean, you could have something like this, and it would still work. You could have a 7 there, and you could have a 7 uh, here. Or up at the top, of course. It would still work. The leg is a little crooked, but it still works. So let me draw that for you, and I'll use a, let me see, green this time. We'll use a green this time. Here's, I'll put this, I'll put this seven back to where it was before. It'll be much easier to see the leg, because sometimes the legs can be a bit, a bit, a bit crooked. Okay, so we'll put um, a seven there. Let's see a seven here, and a seven here. And you'll be able to see the, the table easier this way. Here is the leg. Here is the top of the table. And here is the leg. And there's the top of the table. So therefore, you, you've got this situation that I've just showed you. You follow that? Good. Now we come to the final one. The final picture. This is a picture of what I call it is the diagonal cross. And it also covers three blocks. It can be this way, or it can be this way. That way, or this way. If it's this way, it's on vertical blocks. If it's this way, it's on horizontal blocks. Now the one I've got to show you is on horizontal blocks. It's this one up in here. Have a look at these three blocks. We've got, I'll use uh, black this time. We've got a 4-4 four, four and a 4-4. Four, four. Whenever I see that, I immediately know that there has to be a four in the middle. There. Immediately. It's really neat, because if you say, okay, if this is a four, and that's a little four, well then you know it has to go four, four, four. It can't go four, 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 it won't work. If it's this is a big four, and then and that's a little four, it'd go four, four, four. Doesn't matter how it works. And you know, it's amazing. The number of times I see these patterns in all the puzzles I do now, because I've got used to, and you will get used to, seeing these actual figure in, figures, pictures as it were. Now again, with this system, the four doesn't have to be right opposite each other. The four, this four could be over here. It still works. Or this four could be over here. It still works, the same thing as long as that, those two fours are in of that block, and these two fours are in that block, in this case on a top row and a bottom row. So it's bottom, middle, top. So that's, let's draw that out for you, just very quickly. Here's your, di here's your di uh, diagonal. And there it is, okay? So watch for those patterns. You'll see them many, many times from now on as you do more difficult puzzles. But you can also do them in, you'll also see them in simple puzzles. Puzzles. <laughs> Whoopsie daisy. So now, watch, I'm going to get a real puzzle out and show you these shapes in a real puzzle. And see what you, numbers you can get as a result of recognizing these things. Now, don't be surprised if it takes a while for to, to learn to recognize them. But with a lot of doing puzzles like this, you will find, soon get into the habit of seeing them. So I'll be back in a minute and we'll show you the next puzzle. Well, here we are with a real puzzle. It's an easy puzzle. However, it enables me to show you these patterns that I've been showing you up to now. If I look at this, I immediately see some patterns. For example, the first pattern I see is a mallet sideways. Here it is. And immediately I see there, um, there is a um, handle of the mallet 
and it's sideways. Here I have a seven, there I have a seven, and there I have a seven, but also I see a six, six, seven here, and a six, seven here, so you know you have to have a six in there. Did you notice this also? On this top row here, we have a one, six, seven. Here we have a one, six, seven. Therefore, the one, six, seven has to be in the handle. Now, if I look down here, we have a six, a six. That has to be a six because it can't be up there. So there's your six. I'll use the red just so you see the numbers that we learn, we pick up just because we recognize that. And uh, that means that there's only one number left. We have a 167, 167. This has to be the one. So, bang, we got two numbers just like that, recognizing a mallet. Now, what else do I see here? Oh, yes, I see a, um, let me see. I see a, I'll use the blue this time, one of these. Okay, I see one of those. It is here, let me show you. It's cleaver. Okay, if I look at this, it's, it's in this area here. There's your handle, here is your blade. So let me draw that out so you can see it. Here's the blade. And here's the handle. Very good. Now, what is interesting here, that if you notice very careful, carefully, we have not little numbers, but big numbers, and they're just as important. We have a 1-9 here and a 9-9-1 nine, nine, there. If you have a 1-9 and a 9-1 in this pattern, you know they have to be in the handle. So let's look at that now. Well, over here we have in the handle we have to, have to find a 9-1. Well, here's a 9 down here, so the 9 can't be there. That'll have to be a 1. Therefore, the 9 goes over there. Voila! Whoopee! We've just suddenly got two numbers because we recognized a cleaver. Now, there's some more things here I'd like to show you. Oh, yes. Over here on the right, we have a 4-4 four, four here and a 4-4 four, four there. And remember, we only put the little numbers in a block if they're the only two cells those little numbers can go in. If the little numbers can go in a lot of others, forget it. That comes later, okay? So here we have a 4-4, four, four. there we have a 4-4, four, four, so that we have the makings of a diagonal cross. So here we go here, watch this. And right in the middle here we have an empty cell, and that has to be a four. And because we got that four, it's very easy for us to find out what that last number is, isn't it? Now, from previous lessons. Now, let's see if there's anything else. Oh, yes, I see one. There's one down in here. Uh, let's use a uh, green. Well, I'll use a blue for this one again. We'll use a blue. I noticed here, in these three blocks, an upside-down table. Can you see that upside down table there? I'll give you a clue. There's a one and a three and a three and a one. Here we have, in this end, we have a three and a one. Over on this side, we have a three and a one, both in, in similar rows. So therefore, you know that three and a one has to be there. So let's draw that table out, down that way along here. It's upside down. And it comes around like this. And there's your table. Whoops, uh, I think I did the wrong part there. Just a minute. I was looking at it sideways. You've got to look at it straight ahead, and then I'll make, otherwise I wouldn't make that mistake. The leg comes down to here, and then across here to there. There's your upside down table. Here are the legs, and here's the table. Three, one, one, three, one, three here. It was the clue. That means that a one, three have to be in here on the top of the table, even though it's upside down. So let's look up and see what we find. Well, look, I have just suddenly noticed here's a one. So you can't have a one there, so that has to be the three, and therefore that has to be the one. Now, one more to show you, and this is uh, over on the, this side here. 
and I'm going to use a red again for the table. Here we have a, a thick, thick, fairly thick uh, legged table because the numbers are not just right opposite each other. They're still in these two columns. So here is, here's your table here. And we have a 3-5 in those two. There we have a 3-5. So now you have a thick leg, thick legs here, and the table's on the side here. You have a 3-5 here, and down in the same two columns you have a 3-5, but in different locations as long as they are in this block and in those columns. Therefore, over here you must have a 3-5. Well, we've already got a 3, so that's simple. We just simply put the 5 in and we've got it. So there's some examples of the cleaver, the mallet, the table, and uh, the a diagonal cross. So that's it for today's lesson. Bye for now.